Hey, what's up guys? I'm really excited for today's video. We are gonna be doing a whole home portable generator backup. So this is something that I've wanted to do for a very long time. I finally pulled the trigger on a setup for under $1,300. So this is a cheap way, and this is probably the easiest way. I spent quite a bit of time researching this. I looked into manual transfer switches and also Jenner links, and this is an interlock kit. This is by far the easiest and cheapest setup to do this. So let's jump into what we got. So first up over here, we have a 6.3 cable. This is rated for 50 amps. It's a 25 foot cable. The reason we went with the 25 foot cable is because we want to get away from our house with the generator. And this is the interlock kit. So I got this from geninterlock.com. This is about $67. This makes it so you cannot have your main disconnect breaker on and your generator input breaker on. Now that'll make more sense when we go out there. Here we have the inlet plug. This is also rated for 50 amps. It's a twist lock plug. So this we're gonna mount right on the side of the service panel. Here we have the 50 amp breaker. This is what we are going to back feed the panel with. And then we just have a nipple right here. This is what we're gonna feed our number eight wiring into the breaker from the inlet plug. So this is the generator we decided to go with. This is a new generator from Predator or Harbor Freight. It's a 13,000 watt starting generator, and we're gonna be using this on propane. So the cool thing about this, it's a tri-fuel. You can use gasoline, propane, or natural gas. And the long-term plan with this is when we move the propane tank, we're gonna have a little stub up so we can have a full propane supply off our 1,000 gallon tank to feed this generator in case of a long-term outage. So a couple cool things about this, it obviously has the 50 amp output plug. It has a wireless remote to start it, and even on propane, we have a 9,100 watt running rating. So this will be a perfect generator for the entire house backup. This is about $1,300, but we got it on a sell for 20% off. So with tax and everything, we were just over $1,000. And then all of that interlock stuff was just under $300. That includes the breaker, the inlet plug, the cord, and the interlock kit. So like I said, under $1,300 and we will have a whole home backup setup. All right guys, we're out here at the service. This is a Square D home line service. Now I have a lot of breaker space in here and you can see we have a 200 amp service disconnect right here. So we are gonna mount this 50 amp breaker. Actually, let me start off by saying, if you are not qualified to be working in an electrical panel, then obviously hire a professional. And with that being said, let's get back into it. So we have a 50 amp breaker right here. This is what the generator is going to feed. Now the point of the interlock kit is that it is going to make it so that we cannot have the service disconnect on and the 50 amp generator plug on at the same time. So the way that this works is it's gonna, when we have this one on, it's going to be blocking the generator breaker. And then when we have this one off, we can slide this up, which makes it so we can turn the generator breaker on. That way we're never back feeding the grid because in the event of the power lines going down, someone is probably gonna be working on it. And if you don't turn off your service disconnect and you turn your generator on, you're gonna back feed the grid and you could possibly hurt someone down the line. So you do not wanna do that. For our generator inlet box, the easiest thing for me to do is just to mount it on the side right here. It's gonna look the cleanest and it's not gonna stand out. And then we will just use that nipple to poke through here. And then we can feed that 50 amp breaker with the number eight copper wiring. So first up, I'm going to drill this hole out here and we're gonna mount this on the side. All right, this is the nipple we're gonna be using. We have a plastic bushing for one side. And then we have a bonding bushing for the service side. Now we got the cover here. We are gonna take this inside, read the instructions. We're gonna figure out where we need to drill our holes so that we can mount this interlock kit on here. All right, the gen interlock kit comes with some really good instructions with color pictures and everything. So for this panel, yours could be different. We are gonna line up this base plate with the bottom of the service disconnect breaker here and then it actually included this drill bit. So we're gonna go through and drill these holes real quick. All right, now we're gonna feed this screw up with the Loctite on from the back. Put the base plate on. 
Then we're going to install the sliding part. And then these are the little cap screws. So once you get them threaded on there, you're not able to remove this unless you take this whole cover off. Okay, there we go. Now this can slide like that. And that's what's gonna make it so only one or the other breaker can be on. All right, also included is a bunch of warning labels. So we're gonna take this sticker right here and we're gonna install it on the square D breaker. All right, now we're gonna take the 50 amp breaker and install it in the service. So this is a home line breaker, like I said earlier, so it's really easy. You're just gonna slide the bottom in push it in like that and that's installed. Now for this portion, we have to put uh, these two zip ties around both of these breakers to squeeze them together. So for that, I'm gonna turn the main disconnect off to the house. That's gonna kill this entire panel basically, except for these feeders. Always wanna check and make sure that you're actually off. See, no voltage. Come in here and we're gonna cut these off. Now we are gonna put this cover back in. All right, so I'm gonna show you guys how this works. So right now, your main grid power is on. Everything's being fed. And see, you can't turn this breaker on now because this is in the way. So you can never back feed it. You have to turn the main disconnect off, slide that up, and now you can turn your generator breaker on. But then you also can't turn on your main disconnect to back feed your generator. So that's how the interlock kit works. So with our number eight wiring, we have two hots, the black and the red. We have our neutral and we have our number 10 ground. So we're just gonna feed this through. Like that. Okay, we're gonna take our ground. We're gonna undo this screw in the lug. And because your neutrals and your grounds are bonded, we're just gonna land them on the same bar right here. Now we're gonna bring our black and red up and we are gonna tie them on this 50 amp breaker. Give them a little tug, make sure they're good. Now we are completed inside here. All right, we're done in here now. I'm gonna throw the cover back on, flip the main disconnect back on so our fridge can continue to run. W's were white, X black, Y red. Give everything a little tug, make sure it's all tight. And then we're just gonna kind of fold this up or bunch it up. Tighten the screw on the front. That's done. All right, we're gonna roll out this generator. Now this is a big generator. It's about 260 pounds. Good thing my wife's still strong enough to wheel this thing out in case I'm not home and it needs to be done. So this is just gonna be a test. I'm not gonna take it super far out. Face the exhaust away from the house. Now for this, I'm just gonna be using a small propane tank to feed this until the permanent propane feed is hooked up. So let's go grab the cord and the propane tank. Another cool feature about this generator is it came with this propane hose here. So you can hook it up to a smaller propane tank like this. Really nice feature they threw in. So all you got to do with this, it's a quick connect, you'll just pull that out, pop this cover off, clip that on like that. Now we are gonna turn on the propane tank, open it up all the way. And another really cool feature about this generator is it comes with a trickle charger that you plug in right here that'll always keep this battery charged. So our plan is to keep this generator inside the shop, out of the weather, always on the trickle charger so the battery's always ready to go. And then in the event we need it, we'll just wheel it out, hook it up, roll the cord out, and we're good to go. All right, now we are gonna turn this switch over to propane, and then we can start it either with the remote or we can start it with the start button here. So what we're gonna do is push it, wait a second, push it again. Let it sit for a second. 
how that's going. You always want to let your generator warm up for like a minute. And then you can see the instructions here. Plug in power cord into generator inlet box. Start generator to warm up. Turn off all high load breakers. Turn off main breaker. Move interlock to block main breaker and turn on generator. So we're going to let that warm up and I'm going to unroll this cord. And it is a twist lock. So you put it in like this, and then you got to twist it, lock it into place. We're going to flip off the main breaker. Now we are going to slide this up, flip on our 50 amp generator input, and now we're going to go turn the breaker on on the generator, and it's going to feed everything. All the lights just turned on. Hey guys, I don't know if you can tell, but right now the shop lights and everything in the house and shop are completely powered by the generator. So it works amazing. We're ready for an outage. Now let's go down and I will do everything in reverse to shut everything down and tie it back to the grid power. So we'll start over at the generator. I'm going to flip off the main breaker. Then we'll flip off the breaker here in the panel. slide that down. Now we can flip our disconnect back on. Close this up and now we can shut the generator down. And then we'll just do everything in reverse. So we'll turn the propane tank off, pop this off here, cover it back up. We'll roll the cord up. Pull the generator back inside, get the battery charging, and it's really that easy. So my goal of this video is just to make a quick and easy portable generator backup system. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below or if you have any more questions. This is the best route for me. It's probably the best route for you if you can get an interlock kit for your panel, but check out the website, see what you can find. Thanks guys for watching and we'll see you in the next one.